Hi, I'm just Master Valerie Wolf, and I'll be reviewing the movie Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey stars Martin Freeman as Bilbo Baggins and Ian McKellen returning as Gandalf. It also features some of the great actors from the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, like Ian Holm as Old Bilbo, uh, Elijah Wood as Frodo, Hugo Weaving as Lord Elrond, and Kate Blanchett as Galadriel. The movie is written and directed by Peter Jackson, who is the director of the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. And what made me most excited to go see this movie was the fact that um, it was initially announced that it would be only two parts movie, and then in the process it was announced that it is going to be a trilogy. And that's quite interesting because the book, the Tolkien's book, The Hobbit, is relatively short compared to its successor, Lord of the Rings. So I was really interested in how they will manage to capture the spirit of the Middle Earth and make every scene interesting in case the movie is going to be so long compared to the actual books. Uh, the first thing I'd like to share is that I was a little worried that maybe the move wouldn't work out so well. I read some reviews, some of them said that it was a great story, but it wasn't as epic as The Lord of the Rings. And of course, I mean, after all, The Hobbit was the first, one of the first um, books by Tolkien. So later on, he changed his way of writing and and uh, that then then we have the Lord of the Rings, much darker, more epic story. So the Hobbit was made more of like like a fairy tale, like a nice story for kids. Nevertheless, I have to say that I was really impressed of this movie. So the first thing that we have is Peter Jackson's amazing ability to capture the spirit of Middle Earth. I have to say that uh, despite some people saying. And the first part of the movie, like the first hour or so, it's a little boring and nothing is really going on. There was no moment in this movie that I felt a bit bored or a feeling that nothing interesting is going on. Every scene has something to say about the story. And certainly if some things could be could have been left away or cut out for the extended version of the movie. Yet I believe that you will feel like every scene is where it should be. So I didn't feel bored even for one moment on what I saw. Now the first thing I would like to talk about is Bilbo. Now the Bilbo Baggins character is really crucial in this movie and uh, if that didn't work probably the whole movie wouldn't have worked out. That's the reason why I believe that Martin Freeman is great in, in his role and uh, actually he is playing fantastic every single scene. First, it, we start with the Bilbo Baggins, who is uh, a little bit uh, annoyed with the things that happened to him at the start of the movie, and then he actually starts to adapt, starts to adjust himself, and, and really get curious about this adventure that he's invited by Gandalf and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the dwarves. So we see a real emotional journey of a hobbit who has to travel from the from the world of the comfortable and everything is good and familiar to the world of the unknown and he's going on to an adventure. Now I think that this part of the movie is really the most important because it can very well relate to the real life and how sometimes in order to achieve something great, in order to change yourself, you really have to take those steps that lead you from the from the world of the familiar the, to, 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 to some new directions and that, that will help you to rediscover yourself and, and really what you can do and what your abilities and gifts are. So that is really well captured in this movie with the role of Bilbo. So the Gandalf is coming, he's asking Bilbo to come onto an adventure, he's a little bit hesitant at the time and then it's get, it gets really interesting. We also have the dwarves and uh, this is something interesting that uh, each one of the dwarves has its own character but basically they can't be all in this movie. What I'm saying is that only certain dwarves are particularly well explained. So we have some dwarves out there who are actually left behind because after all they're 13 and we have basically a character developing of Bilbo. We have uh, um, 
Thorin and his story as well. I believe in the next part, in the next chapters of the movie, we're going to see more and hear uh, and just learn more about the other dwarves that play a significant role in the whole trilogy. So, uh, in the beginning, uh, they are coming in his house, so Bilbo is a little bit hesitant, but I have to admit, it was a great scene. So, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm just going to say that you'd love the first hour if you don't read any reviews that are saying to you, okay, this is boring and this is not good. So, uh, one of the best things about this movie is Gandalf. This man is great. Ian McKellen plays Gandalf perfect. Now, uh, in the Lord of the Rings series, we ha we know him as Gandalf the White. So, here, since this is a prequel, we still have Gandalf the Grey. Gandalf is an amazing character and one of the things that makes this character so powerful is uh, uh, that he's almost playing the role of a, of a grandfather who is supportive and at the same time he has this strong heart and, and knowledge so he knows and understands more than anyone else and, and through the movie Bilbo gets to feel that and you really understand why he trusts Gandalf rather than just staying his home. So Gandalf is one of the most amazing characters in this movie. The, ne the other character we have to speak about is Thorin. The Thorin is the uh, strongest dwarf that's what I can say for certain about this movie and his story is a bit revealed in, in that in that movie as opposed to the other dwarves probably we're gonna learn about them later but uh, he is very much like Aragorn King Aragorn in the Lord of the Rings trilogy we have the same character developing he's he's smart he's brave he's uh, really not trusting in the beginning and then you realize that behind that uh, very cold natured person there is actually a loving heart and, and great bravery within so uh, I think Richard Armitage who plays Torin did a great job in this movie in order to really help Torin to become such a powerful character of course we have him re re revealing secrets and at the same time, he's that badass actor. He's bad, that badass character that really can fight. I mean, when you see this movie, you're going to find out that it's not just about him being smart, intelligent, really strong, but he's also a powerful fighter, and, and I think you're going to see that. There are moments with Thorin in that movie where you're going to see the leadership wood in his eyes. So it, it's, it's amazing, really. We have the other dwarves, like Philly, and we also have uh, uh, Killy, who are very supportive to Thorin, and they're practically uh, the most well-developed characters from the dwarf in the actual movie. So they're always with him, they're always with Thorin, and helping him into the battles. Probably we're going to learn more about them together with the other dwarves in the other two movies that we have. So, I think that uh, Thorin, Killy, and Hilly are very well presented in this movie. Now, of course, we have the other dwarves who are kind of funny and interesting. Uh, I believe that they will become more serious, if I can express myself that way, in, within the next movies. We have a Buffer, Bomber, we have um, the Ori character. You know, all of them have their specific look and very interesting uh, ways of communicating and basically acting. So I think all all the actors from the dwarf made from the dwarves made made a great impact for the whole movie to look the way it is. And although their characters and their, the the background story were not was not developed that much, I think they were great. Thirteen dwarves and basically one leader. This is amazing. So, pretty much the story is about these 13 dwarves going on an adventure, a really dangerous trip to return Erebor and they start this trip, they start this, this very amazing journey to the Lonely Mountain. So, uh, to certain moments, to a certain extent, the movie uh, looks very similar to the Fellowship of the Ring, the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, but it has this very uh, light character which makes it uh, not that dark, not that epic, I would say, at the same time as the Lord of the Rings. So, there is certainly a very important difference. Now, 
As we speak about the characters, I cannot forget to mention about their Radagast the Brown, who is a wizard, and some people say that this character was sort of annoying. Yes, I would say it was more of a kid's character, so this this character would be really liked by the kids. Some adults may find it very annoying. I particularly liked it. I don't think it was great, but I don't think it was really annoying as well. I think it will be really, really uh, likable to many of the children who will see the movie. And uh, I think it has part in the actual movie, so the scene uh, could have been cut a little bit, but yet I believe he had a great impact. Also, we do have one of the most amazing characters, and actually for me this character really made the movie great, and that was Gollum. Now Gollum and his way of talking and, and uh, basically the, the way how the, the digital character is created is particularly amazing. I think the Gollum is one of the most amazing characters of this movie. Uh, I have to say uh, I also liked Frodo who had a ke cameo appearance in the start of the movie. We have Galadriel and uh, they, were, uh, they were all great. Uh, and when it comes to the plot Besides the character developing, we also have a very interesting situation. We have the Gandalf finding the magic sword and uh, giving it to Bilbo. So this this sword it shines blue when there are goblins and and orcs are around. So it was it was really amazing. We also have that uh, return to Rivendell, where uh, Gandalf, the dwarves, and uh, Bilbo get to meet with Lord Elrond and the, the the elves. So that was really amazing and I, I think it was great, the whole uh, scene. It was very beautifully, the makeup was fantastic and the direction was, was simply beautiful. So what I have to say is that I was also very impressed with the scene where Gandalf, Sauron, also Lord Elrond and Galadriel sit on the table and they're basically talking about the danger that, that that is coming to the Middle Earth. I don't want to spoil anything again, but I'd like to say that this is a very interesting scene, and it gives a lot of ideas away for on what what it what the next movies will be about and how the story will develop from here. Uh, particularly the the scene that I most liked about this movie and made the movie for me that that scene actually made me cry was the scene when. Galadriel is talking to Gandalf, and Gandalf is, say, is saying s some really amazing things. And actually, there is a lot of wisdom in the scene, and uh, it really made me cry. There were a few moments in the Lord of the Rings trilogy that also made me cry, but this scene was one of them. It it shows the epic uh, in in these movies. It, it wasn't just an adventurous fairy tale, but there was something more to it. It makes the movie worth watching. There is something to learn, to understand, and, and really try to apply in life. There is a lot of wisdom in that scene. And uh, if not for anything else, I, I love the scene between Galadriel and Gandalf and their way of how they talked to each other. Of course, in the other scenes, there is a lot of adventure. We have the dwarves on the, going on their pad. There are a lot of dangers. There, there are amazing, brilliant fights. Uh, some of them uh, show too much c CGI that that is being applied uh, as opposed to the Lord of the Rings that had a lot of CGI as well but but it was uh, mixed with a lot of uh, real pictures and real real makeup and shoots so here it has a little more uh, CGI but again uh, it had some really powerful moments like the moment in which uh, Thorin is going against Azok the Defiler that was really extraordinary and, and the way how Bilbo intervenes you have to see that scene it's really nice and incredibly powerful you'd love it so the fans of the Lord of the Rings will also love the scene between Bilbo and Gollum this is probably one of the best scenes in the movie I more like this the scene between Galadriel and uh, Gandalf, but you're also going to like this one a lot. There is a lot of uh, feeling into it, and basically it's very original. It's made in the same level as uh, every other scene, I would say, from the from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and uh, I think it's probably one of the most original and extraordinary scenes that has ever being made in this movie. So I hope that we're going to see more of that in the upcoming movies that will be 
uh, next year and the one after. So overall, I have to say that there was a little too much CGI. I mean, we could we could see that uh, it's basically being made for 3D. I have to I have to uh, really say that the 3D was great. There's a little bit too much CGI, but still the the the, the creatures were made very beautifully, and there was a lot of effort into that, which I appreciate. The script was great. I don't feel like uh, uh, basically there were moments that could be cut out because the movie wasn't exactly the same way as the Lord of the Rings was. Essentially the movie has a different direction. It's made more as a fairy tale which has its epic sides and is very interestingly made. Certainly it has some drawbacks because of the nature of the story and yet I am totally a great believer that uh, within the next movies the Lord of the Rings uh, uh, touch will return and we're gonna see even more epics sides of the of the upcoming Hobbit movies so basically my assessment for this for this film is 8.5 just the, almost the same as it is in IMDb I, I have to admit I do love it there are some some little flaws with the movie yet it's a very lovely adventure so every fan of the Lord of the Rings will love that and again I believe there is a lot of wisdom in the movie, very beautiful scenes, very well directed dialogue, and above all, an amazing cinematography. So, you'd love it, take a look at it, I guarantee that will be an amazing experience for you.